see what particular thing of this is. Yep, R290. I'm gonna swap this compressor out. I have the replacement compressor. It's inside this cabinet. It's a, it's a, I swapped it from a good working unit. So basically, have an open space, fire extinguisher nearby, cut off the process pipe, Looks like the previous person tested it. This wasn't pumping. That's why I'm replacing it. So I'm gonna try to cut the lines out. As you can see, I sand them down. I wanna minimize brazing as part as, I wanna braze as less as possible. Let's swap with that filter dryer. So let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start digging into this. So this is the introduction of the Odyssey of the 290. Notice what they say here. Risk of fire, flammable refrigerant, repaired by only trained service personnel. Do not use mechanical devices to deforce refrigerator. Do not puncture the tubing. I think somebody likes to go crazy with the ice pick if it freezes up. So, and R290. Oh, that's what we got for now. Here's the replacement compressor. See, so you have to unsweat. Here, here, relay box. So here I'm gonna have to unsweat, I'm gonna have to unsweat here because it has a fitting, like a reducer fitting. So I gotta be really careful with that. Filter dryer I'm gonna swap out for tobacco. It looks like a same, 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 same type filter. And then I'm gonna have to mark it with red somewhere. See, it has a red tape, so usually when you see the red tape, you know it's a flame over refrigerant that's used. This I have to cut out for later. So I'm just cut it here, try to braze on a, a service stub, and then I might just put I might pinch it off and I'll show that later when I do it. But basically, you just have to be careful having an open space. So here I'm gonna here I'm gonna pull it out with a torch. And then we're gonna pull a compressor out and then we're gonna prep this one up and then I'll show everything when it's prepped up. As you see, we got the compressor in place. It's bolted down. Here's a start kit, wires. Wires are the other one, I'll do that. We'll do that later. But got the discharge line in. I'm gonna have to raise this one in first for the little space. Uh, as you can see, it's a really tight fit, tight space, so I have to I'll braid this one first, then I'll just then, then braid the suction line in. Then we'll go to the dryer. And then we'll put a fitting. We'll put a fitting for service. And then we'll, we'll I'll just solder a quarter inch coping. I have a, I have a service valve that I'll, I'll, I'll braze to it. And we'll, re, and we'll pinch it off. We'll have the pinch off tool in the car. We'll, we'll bring up the pinch off tool. And then after we charge up and everything, we'll just pinch off. So that's strategy for now okay we got the stubs we got the stubs brazed in particular part about this is that this is a I took this of a known working condensing unit uh if you I think if you don't I think if you would braze nitrogen to it it wouldn't happen well, sometimes the re the residual whatever is residual left it builds up pressure and while you're heating up it tends to spit the pipe out. So while you're brazing, you have to be careful. You you feel the pressure that's going to spit it out. You would have to apply pressure to do the brazes. This is for a used one. And a new one, on a new replacement box, one, I don't think you're going to have that problem. But that's the only hiccup I ran into right now. But I got that solved. They had the brazes. They look pretty good. Let's see. Uh... And there, they look good. So, I think that's the only little hiccup I've found for now doing this. this is the first time I really do it full R290. Most of them were conversions. I would just convert to another gas. I did an R600 one, but I changed to 134A. It was a new compressor, so I didn't have that problem. So, that's the only hiccup that I've found now. 
So I already got those braced in, so I got the filter dryer in and a service valve to get this thing in the vacuum. Basically, we have the compressor in. All I have to do is uh, put, get the vacuum pump and put it in a vacuum. So I was wiring up the control box, and as you can see, they have these Wago connectors. Uh, these are the ones that scrap off the units. The true coolers use them a lot, and the true freezers use them a lot, the 290 units. So we scra I scrapped a couple out of them, so I have a couple of these Wago connectors, so they're like really easier. Just snap in, peel, snap in. Here I use some spade connectors so I won't have to damage the terminals. And I wire another the grounds to the ground here. So what I'm gonna do is tie this up, put the control box in, and bolt it down, and then get this thing on the vacuum and charge it up. We got the control box in, so we're ready. Here's a finished, almost finished product. Now we just gotta charge up in the back and put the I'll put that pipe back now the drain pipe and we'll just be ready to back and charge now the moment of truth we have the vacuum going so that means charge is coming soon so I gotta get the scale and the can and all that other good stuff so coming soon charging up oh this was crazy up I didn't show it because the the scissor that punched it, when I punched the can, it started leaking everywhere, so I had to charge really fast. I put it on the scale. I got close to the four ounces I could, so. And I just let it, when I turned on, I just let it pull it a little bit in, so. It took almost the whole can, so. I'm confident that I did get the charger okay. But, normally if you have the kit, you would just put the punching valve here, put it in a container. They have like a container you put on the scale and just weigh in your charge But that I don't recommend using it. It made a mess It punched it did punch the can but it made a big mess So for next time I'm gonna see if I can buy the if I have the top puncher I'll, I'll use that But it's a learning experience, but I think it's up and running So I don't know if I'm gonna pinch off pinch off the service valve. I think I am so I'm just, I'm just observing everything, see if it tempts, so let's see what happens. It's alive. Not bad, it's been about 15 minutes on. So what happened with the, with the, here it goes, and there's a fat shot. Hey. Basically what we had with the, uh, what we tried, when I went to go charge it up with refrigerant was that uh, I had a piercing, a piercing scissor and it didn't pierce the can really well so it started pissing everywhere. So I had to rush and put it on the scale but the can was about, the can's about two and a half, three ounces and they say the weight's eight so I needed four. So I think I got the four ounces in there. I just buttoned everything up. I left the I left the service valve on for reference just in case. But I have 29 degrees now temping, so I think it's pretty good. Uh, things I'll do the next time I will try to get the piercing kit for the for the can. And you know it's a learning experience. It's a learning experience every day. It's a lot of it has a, it has some it has some tricks to it, but you know. It's easy. If you ask me from 1 to a 10 how hard it was, I'll probably give it a 4. So that's my take on it. That's the video of the installation of the compressor. I hope you enjoy. Like, share, subscribe. Or if I'm going to put this on YouTube, I'll put it on IGTV also. Like, comment, follow. Thanks a lot for watching.